Welcome to module five of applied statistics. In this, in this short video, we're going to be looking at some more applications of hypothesis testing and confidence interval construction, specifically um, when you have two samples that you're trying to compare. So we first want to just actually <laughs> talk a little bit about the types of variables that we're uh, sampling. Um, we should know these definitions when we're talking about quantitative variables it's really some number something that can be assigned a number so measurements when you're counting things what we're talking about with random variables discrete and continuous those would be quantitative as long as you can assign some number to the value uh, qualitative on the other hand would be um, where you have to describe it with words such as um, color um, you know food preference um, type of car these would be variables that would be qualitative so you're describing something with words instead of numbers okay um, now when you're looking at two different populations um, you have to know whether or not the two populations are independent or dependent on each other so independent sampling is best kind of exemplified by um, you have a control group and you have an experimental group. So you have some sort of, uh, maybe you have a group that's taking placebo pills and then you have a group that's taking some experimental drug. Uh, those two groups should be independent of each other. Like whether or not one person from group A has a certain response should be, have nothing to do with whether something, someone from group B has some response. So completely independent of each other, unrelated, not affecting each other at all. Dependent, on the other hand, are going to be groups where there is some relationship between the two groups. And common examples would be when you test someone before and then after they take some sort of, have some sort of treatment. Like you want to see how they perform on some test before some training exercise and then after a training exercise. And you want to see what is the effect of the training exercise. This way you're able to account for a lot of different factors that give you variation between groups since you're testing the same person before and after. Um, and so another example of dependent groups would be, um, say you're, you're doing a survey and you're asking a husband and wife or spouses uh, some question like, how happy are you in your relationship? Or do you like, do you, I don't know, um, <laughs> uh, how much do you like uh, the summertime or whatever question it is, um, it's very likely that spouses are going to have responses that are related to each other, what we're going to call correlated uh, a little later on in this course, um, uh, as opposed to two unrelated individuals. So you want to pair these people together somehow when you're doing your analysis. The same goes for, say, uh, if you're having twins per participating in some study, um, you want to account for a lot of the genetic uh, variability uh, and kind of handle that by just looking at how twins will respond differently to some some sort of stimulus. Uh, st statisticians love twins uh, and researchers, especially medical researchers. If they can get their hands on a bunch of twins, that's great. So, uh, how we handle a two-sample proportion test. This is when we are, uh, you have two independent groups and you want to ask some question about what, how the proportion in group one is different from proportion in group two. So, um, for example, uh, American men versus American women, whether or not they like, uh, what proportion of them like red cars? okay or something arbitrary like that um, so the way we phrase it as we have with other hypothesis tests is we have a null hypothesis and an alternative and the null is going to be that the two proportions are the same which can be expressed as p1 equals p2 or as p1 minus p2 equals zero you can see by it's just an algebraic thing you can subtract p2 from both sides of the equation so you're just saying the difference between the two proportion numbers is zero. That's another way of saying they're equal. Um, the alternative hypothesis could be 
not equal to, less than, or greater than, as has been the case before. And you could express it in either of those two ways. Uh, and, and, of course, the sample statistic that this is going to be based on is the sample proportion. And we have a sampling distribution for the difference of the two sample proportions, p1 hat minus p2 hat. And this sampling distribution is a normal distribution. And because we know it, this, the, this statistic follows a normal distribution, we can say something about probabilities and we can calculate p-value and so forth. Um, so when, in practice, you'll be using software to do this. You just have to be sure to put all the numbers in the right place. Uh, but then you can interpret the test statistic, um, which is going to be a z statistic, and uh, an associated p-value. And as, as always is the case, when you have a very small p-value, that means you want to reject the null hypothesis. A very large p-value tells you to not reject the null. Uh, constructing a two-sample proportion confidence interval. This is the uh, a confidence interval on the difference between two proportions. Um, is done in, uh, in StatCrunch. You really just have to select that you want to do a confidence interval rather than a rather than a hypothesis test. I'm providing you here with the formula, but please, uh, I don't want you to try to memorize this formula. Um, it's just good to know that a confidence interval is, is being done in the same way as is done for a single sample. You have a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. And the formula for margin of error, has, there's a lot of like statistical theory and stuff. I mean, it, there's, it, there's math that goes into why it is this formula. You don't have to worry about that. You don't even have to use the formula. You can let the software do it for you. But what we're looking at is a confidence interval that's going to estimate the difference between the two proportions. And so what's going to be, well, the way we'll interpret it is if this confidence interval um, is all in the positive numbers or all in the negative numbers, um, which is, so for example, let's say a 95% confidence interval for P1 minus P2 is uh, 0 0.07 to 0 0.15, okay? That means that we're estimating with 95% confidence that P1 is between uh, between 0 0.07 and 0.15 greater than P2. So in other words, we if we had to decide whether or not P1 was greater than P2, we could say yes, with 95% confidence, it is the case. Um, if this confidence interval straddles zero, right? if the lower bound is negative and the upper bound is positive, we couldn't rule out with 95% confidence whether P1 was less than P2 equal to P2 or greater than P2 because all of those possibilities are um, are within the the range of our confidence interval if that was the case. Now paired sample tests uh, where you have dependent samples um, for example you have before and after I'm gonna call the the variables X for before and Y for after so you're gonna have the same amount of samples before and after so every individual is sampled first uh, before and then again after. So x1 and y1 are paired, x2, y2 are paired. And this x's and y's, they just are, are placeholders for numbers. If you actually have some data, you'd have numbers in that place. So here's the thing. All we're going to do is calculate the difference between each y and the x. This is The difference is how much it changed. So y1 minus x1 is, we'll call it d1, the f difference 1 and so forth down the line. Um, so y minus x is going to be your difference. And so you'll have a, a third column of numbers, in a sense, which are your d's, your differences. Once you have your differences, you just look at that one list of numbers and you do a one sample t-test on those numbers. Uh, and so you can ask a question like, uh, on average, is the, is the change positive? Like, on average, did this treatment increase the, the you know, did the, it increase the average? Um, so the hy null hypothesis would be that the mean of the differences equals zero. The alternative would be the mean of the differences is greater than zero. That's the hunch of the researcher, me. 
in StatCrunch, you can you just choose a paired sample t-test and you just select the columns one column two very easy and you watch examples of that in um, my next video okay lastly uh, when you're doing an independent samples t-test um, this is the case where maybe I'm sampling um, 45 people from group one and maybe 55 people from group two so I don't have to have the same number of samples from the two groups because um, that's uh, I'm not sampling each person before and after these are independent groups independent samples they can have different sample sizes so I could ask a question like um, is the average uh, is the average weight of uh, bullfrogs in Connecticut different from the average weight of bullfrogs in North Dakota and uh, so Connecticut bullfrogs is population one North Dakota bullfrogs is population two. I, you know, you calculate, you, you sample bullfrogs, you have a sample average, sample standard deviation from both groups. Um, anyway, the, the null hypothesis would say something like the two means are equal. The alternative, the two means are unequal, not equal, greater than or equal, greater than or less than, but not equal. Um, and you can phrase the null and the alternative as as what I just said, that mu1 equals mu2 or mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. The same way it is for proportions, you may see it done in both ways and just know that they're equivalent to each other. And of course, we have a we know a, a theoretical sampling distribution for x1 minus x2, assuming that the, con, the, the central limit theorem applies. Like you need to have um, uh, either large sample size or small sample size sampling from populations which are approximately normal um, but anyway you yeah you can do an independent t-test in StatCrunch very easy to do watch my example in the next video but that's the idea um, and that's all there is to it